you know, they say when you're black, you got to work twice as hard for half as much. Add a woman to that in a male dominated world, I had to work even harder. Hi, I'm Rachel Lindsay, first black bachelorette, lawyer, media personality, podcaster, and guest speaker. I grew up in a privileged, private bubble. And by the time it was old enough for me to get loose and go outside of it, I was like bursting through that bubble, like planning my escape as soon as possible. I remember laughing and my first thought was, why would I ever go on this show? And then the second thing I thought was, everybody knows black people don't go far on the show. So why would I even waste my time on this? I go down to the audition, long story short, they end up like skipping me to the line because I tried to leave to go back to work. Uh, I have a five minute interview. They're like, you're going to Hollywood. But it was actually having a conversation with someone who, a mother, who knew I was going to be on the show. And she was like, I'm so happy that someone like you is on the show. My young daughter, who's a fan of the show, can watch this and be inspired and see someone who looks like her. And I thought, you know what? This is bigger than me, and I have an opportunity to represent myself as a black woman to an audience who hasn't seen someone who looks like me in this role. And so by the time I came on the show, I knew exactly what I wanted out of a man. And so when I met Brian, we kind of had this banter, this vibe where you, we were connecting. And I remember thinking, okay, we're gonna be best friends. I'm gonna fall in love with this guy. And maybe if I'm lucky, it'll be both. But I knew we had a connection from the first time that we met. I used to say guys like the idea of me, but not the reality of me. Brian actually does like the reality of me. For the first time, and I don't even know how long, I was doing something that I wanted to do, and I wasn't scared of the consequences that were going to happen from it. It's what Rachel wanted to do, and so Rachel did it. What is it that I'm passionate about, where I feel like I've been given this platform, so now how do I use it for a purpose? And that's where higher learning came about. But we started it and the idea of it prior to what happened in May 2020. When we learned about Ahmaud Arbery, we learned about Breonna Taylor, and we saw what happened with George Floyd. And the podcast kind of shifted as a response to what's happening in the community. We started to put the feeling and the emotion behind it because we realized people were listening to us not just for understanding, but to also feel what it is that we were going through. And so the podcast became so much more than just talking. It became a feeling. It became the pulse, the heartbeat of what was going on in the community. Our parents come from a generation where you work to survive. And we come from a generation where you work to be happy, to do what you love. And that's the way that I live now. I wanna to continue to use my platform. I wanna to continue to represent black women. I wanna to continue to represent the black community. I wanna to continue to represent myself. I live my life on my own terms by doing what I wanna do.